Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Again, thank you so much for being here with me today. If you're new here, my name is Ethne. I'm currently a graduate student at Yale and I post videos about architecture and design. In this video, I'll be showing my a day in life working as an architecture intern in New York City. This will be relevant if you're interested in working in New York or if you're studying architecture and thinking about internships. In the recent survey I sent out on my channel's community, many of you indicated that you would like to see more vlogs, so I made this video hoping to provide useful content for you guys, and I want to provide a more realistic view of what life could actually look like for you if you choose to work in New York as a young professional who's not originally from the city. Since the actual work I do in my office would obviously be confidential, this video would show more of the life aspect of my internship, and I'll be talking through my journey on why New York, why work in architecture, and how the application process for internship was for me. A bit of background, I am an international student in the United States, and I have never previously lived in New York City until this summer. I have traveled here many times before, and I wanted to use this summer as an opportunity to test if I would enjoy living in a mega city like New York after I graduate. Many other interns I met in my office have the same thoughts, and a two-month internship is a perfect time for you to test if you like a city or a type of job. For this summer, I live in Astoria in Queens, Every morning, I take the subway to Grand Central, where my office is located. I actually go to the office every day, and I know that many people are now working hybrid, but I'm actually getting a full 9-6 to six commute experience. Which is not bad, actually, because it only takes 30 minutes for me to go to the office, and for a city like New York, it's a very comfortable time. I chose to live in Soria in Queens because it's close to my office, it's quiet, and it's obviously cheaper than living in Manhattan. I wanted to pay a rent that can be comfortably covered by my internship salary and still make me feel financially independent and rewarded. After I get out of the subway station, I have a short walk through Bryant Park and my office is on the 40th floor in a building adjacent to the park. I usually start my day with coffee from a cafe downstairs, but the line was too long today, so I skipped that, and I made my own iced tea instead. As an intern, I was plugged into a project team since day one, and I have been helping that one project for pretty much my entire internship. This can be quite common for architecture firms, but definitely not all firms do this. Some companies would have their interns work on more repetitive jobs like model making or I guess making rabbit families. Um, the jobs given to juniors in different architecture firms can vary a lot. You really need to think about what your interest is before committing to a company, whether it's to design, to plan, to make physical model or other types of digital work. Some people would prefer to meet with clients and participate in meetings, while some other people prefer to work in a quieter environment and refine design. I'm sure there are plenty of opportunities for each type of those jobs, and you just need to know what you want. And if you don't know and or you're unsure, a short internship, again, would be a nice time to test something out and see if you like it. Today at lunch, the office has a watercolor painting session. Many of my colleagues graduated from schools like Notre Dame, where hand drawing and like watercoloring was emphasized in their education. So they paint so well, like look at these. Um, we painted fruits and vegetables and Oh yeah, our colleagues bought them from Whole Foods this morning. And then we also had pizza together for lunch. It was a very soothing lunch break. After lunch, again, went back to work. In this office, I mainly use Revit for architecture modeling and drawing, and then Adobe Suite for a presentation. 
At school, I'm more used to using Rhino, partnered with Grasshopper, and so switching to full-time Revit definitely took me a few days to get used to. I also had a, I think it was 15 hours Revit training when I first started this internship. And I have used Revit before, it's just not my first preference software at school. Because I personally like to design with complicated geometries that would take longer to model in Revit compared to Rhino. But now I actually really appreciate the convenient database in Revit, and I understand why it's more efficient in a professional setting. One of the biggest advantages of using Revit is that it can be connected to a cloud system and both you and your teammates can work on a project or model simultaneously. So we do that in the office all the time. I get off work at 6 p.m. every day. I haven't really stayed late working in this company yet. And on Friday, we have this thing called summer hours, which we can leave at around 3 p.m. I think this rhythm should be relatively chill for architecture firms. This is something I care about a lot, actually, especially after having some experience in firms that did have a lot of overtime. I now really value my time, my well-being, and I enjoy working in a more sustainable speed where I can see myself going for a long time. Again, as I'm showing you my subway journey back home, I guess the one last thing I want to touch up on in this video is how I got this internship. Many of you guys messaged me about my personal journey in architecture, so I will share the process of applying to architecture internships. So I indirectly got this job through my school's career fair at Yale. I actually applied to jobs very late this year. I applied in late April, early May for a job that starts in June, which is very last minute. I highly recommend you guys, especially if you're an international student in America like me, you should start looking way earlier, like in February or March. There are many ways to apply. I usually just write to the HR of the company, and their contacts are usually indicated on the company's website. I would write a brief letter explaining why I want to work there avoid to be generic and show my unique experience and my character. If you have friends, seniors, or alumni working in firms you like, you can reach out to them and ask about the firm's projects and culture before applying. I usually find that very helpful. And if you're invited to an interview, you can also ask to visit the office. It really is a two-way choice. If you want to work in New York specifically, like me, it would also be helpful to study the area where your desired firms are located and brainstorm places you would like to live in. I feel like so much of this experience is about curating a lifestyle I like for the summer. I have colleagues from my office living in all five different boroughs of New York City, some even live in Connecticut. It really comes down to an individual choice, whether you prioritize a busy life with lots of socializing, lots of going out, or if you enjoy somewhere quiet and live with your partner or family or by yourself. So that was an average day of me interning in New York City. I hope you find this video somewhat helpful. I actually used a new microphone for this video so hopefully the sound quality is better. If you have any thoughts, questions, or simply want to check in, please comment down below. Subscribe if you would like to see more content. It means so much to me, and I really, really appreciate you guys. I want to continue sharing my realistic experience and views through grad school, through architecture, and later through my joint business degree program. You are also welcome to follow me on Instagram. I get a lot of DMs from you guys asking about study advice and portfolio advice. I love seeing those messages and I love looking at great design work. I'm very honored to perhaps have been helpful for you. However, sometimes I get very busy with school and I reply very, very slowly. I am so sorry. 
but I am trying to reply to everyone. Again, thank you so much for watching and engaging with me. See you next time.